Hey YouTube, this is Alexander and I'm back with another tech video. In this tech video, I just want to give you a comparison between the Nexus 1 and the Nexus 4. So let's get started. Okay, so you might be wondering why am I doing a comparison between the Nexus 1 and the Nexus 4. Well, the reason is because I would just like to take a moment to uh, reflect sort of how Android has, uh, how far it's come, and I realize that Android 2.3 is not the oldest version of Android, um, but it is a pretty good reference to uh, how far Android has come, because they started uh, with very simple look, it wasn't very pretty, and they've sort of worked up to this very nice, in my opinion, very nice looking uh, operating system, so I just kind of want to give some comparisons, and uh, just take a look back at how the uh, OS has sort of evolved. So we're using the Nexus One, which features a 3.7 inch 480 by 800 display. The thinness comes in at, I believe, or thickness, I believe 11, around 11 millimeters, a five megapixel camera, which only recorded up to 480p, an LED flash and a speaker back here and your uh, speaker girl right up here. It had some light sensors, no front facing camera, a trackball, which doubled as notification LED light. And then you had some capacitive buttons down here. Now on the right hand side, this shows the evolution of Android. Uh, you have on-screen buttons now, more manufacturers are moving towards on-screen buttons where there are no capacitive buttons. Uh, they're right on the screen, so as you power the device off, you do not see any buttons, leaving for a very clean, minimalistic look on the front. It features a front-facing camera, which is pretty much standard on any device nowadays. Uh, an 8 megapixel camera, so a bump from the 5. You have your LED flash right here, and then you have a really nice look on the back, which uh, has sort of a dotted pattern. It's glass on the back, glass on the front, two screws down here, and a non-removable battery cover, which I might add. Uh, OEMs in the past have always used a removable battery cover to allow users to get quick access to the battery, uh, SIM card slot, as well as the micro SD. Now, although it's not uncommon for smartphone manufacturers, to get rid of the removable battery cover, it is somewhat common. Uh, there are OEMs that are starting to move away from the removable battery cover in place of a non-removable in order to compensate for the thickness and make the device thinner. So now that we've taken a look at the hardware, uh, which showed a little bit of the progress that Android's made in the past couple of years, we'll go ahead and take a look at the software. If you see here on Android 4.2, we do have uh, more features added to the lock screen than on Android 2.3. So this is running Android 2.3, aka Gingerbread, and all you have is a simple swipe, swipe to unlock and swipe to adjust the ringer. On Android 4.2, we have lock screen widgets, which introduced uh, more functionality to the lock screen, such as these widgets here, information, as well as getting quick access to the camera. It's a very nice addition in my opinion. Next, we'll just take a quick look at how uh, widgets are placed since that's another big uh, difference between Android 2.3 or previous versions and uh, Android 4.2. So to add a widget in Android 4.2 or I believe anywhere from 4.0 uh, and possibly even Honeycomb used uh, similar to this, you're just going to go ahead and it'll, be, it'll vary slightly for each uh, skin, but on Stack Android, you can either swipe over to get to your widgets, or you can just click right up here in widgets. Now, in Android 2.3, you didn't have that. What you had to do was long press, then go to widgets, and select your widget from here. Uh, nice over here, you can use it, and uh, it works, but it's just, it didn't look as nice. It was still functional, of course, but on here, I do prefer this nice slide uh, or swipe to get to the widgets. Some people prefer to have infinite scrolling in the app so that you scroll one over and I'd go back to the first screen rather than right into my widgets. Either way is fine, it just shows though how far Android has come. Another difference is camera UI. The camera UI has changed quite a bit in the past uh, going from uh, gingerbread to ice cream sandwich, uh, sorry, honeycomb, ice cream sandwich, and jelly bean. Uh, in Gingerbread, here we have the UI. Uh, in my opinion, I didn't, I never really liked it too much. You have all your settings right here: uh, your flash, uh, white balance, GPS, uh, geotagging, uh, focus mode, exposure. So then you just your basic settings. If you hit that settings button, um, you could also add color effects and your zoom right here. 
And then if you wanted to get to your pictures, your camera gallery, you just hit where it has that little black box right there. And if you wanted to record, you swipe up and you have uh, some settings here to adjust for your video recording. Now over here in Android 4.2, which is what this Nexus 4 is running, it's very minimalistic and I highly prefer this look uh, as opposed to this right over here. You have the option down here to get to uh, your different types of picture taking mode. So if you want to record a video, take a panorama, 360 panorama, or just a regular picture. And then right here you have your button to take the picture. And this little circle down here will get you your options similar to what this guy does over here or any of these ones down here. Similarly, you can also press to access these. And then to get to your previous picture, it's quite simple. You just swipe over to the right. All right, so I'm gonna take a quick look at the settings UI and then try to wrap it up a little bit. The settings UI has also been very polished. As you can see, we have everything categorized now into wireless and networks. And then we move down here to device settings, personal and accounts, and then system. Now keep in mind this will vary, these settings will vary uh, from OEM to OEM and to skin to skin. So don't take this, uh, you know, and think all settings for Android now look like this. They're, they're all somewhat categorized, but it, they don't look exactly like this. This is stock Android. Over on previous versions of stock Android 2.3 and uh, I believe lower, everything was just kind of jumbled here and uh, there was no categorization of these settings. It was just you get to whatever controls you wanted to, and it also it didn't look as nice. Uh, I do realize that these icons uh, have no color to them, which would be, in my opinion, I prefer them not to have color, um, but it just doesn't look as nice over here on Android 2.3. As you swipe up, though, you can see we have this little yellow bar, or orange, and on Android 4.0, I believe they introduced this, where you swipe when you swipe too much, you'll get a nice blue bar to match the uh, system uh, UI. Another difference, though, that I would like to mention from the uh, in the evolution of Android would be processor. Uh, processors and screen technology has just completely taken off in the past couple years. Uh, over here, you had a one gigahertz uh, single core Snapdragon S1 processor, which at the time was uh, was fast. It was Wow, look, at it's got a 1 gigahertz processor. Uh, now, if you're seen with a 1 gigahertz processor, you are sort of outdated. Uh, now, 1.4 to uh, 1.7 uh, is becoming the norm with uh, quad-core processors and even 8 cores. 8 core is something, though, that hasn't uh, quite yet, I don't think, has be re been released as of this video, although they are coming. So cores are have gained traction in the past couple years, processing speed as well as RAM. This guy's got 2 gig of RAM. This guy only has 512 megabytes of RAM. So as you can see, the evolution of Android and smartphones in general has completely uh, just blown up from a little... Uh, not even power device, just this nice little device that does what you need it to with some processing power behind it to these almost sort of mini computers that have tons of processing power to get tasks done. Uh, if you need to have a lot of multitasking, you have it right there available, um, which is one last thing. You see multitasking over here. You would press and hold the home button, and over here you have a dedicated button for that. Okay, so that was sort of my overview of the evolution of Android from 2.3 to 4.2. Uh, just showing off some some simple, small differences, somewhat, some of them are big differences between stock Android. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, give a like. Subscribe down there if there's anything you want to see uh, regarding these, a uh, Nexus S, uh, custom ROMs for the Nexus S, or maybe even the Nexus One. Uh, just let me know. Don't forget to subscribe because I will be having a uh, gift card uh, giveaway just as I did before. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.